ethical egoism. Ethical egoism is the normative ethical position that moral agents ought to do what is in their own self-interest. It differs from psychological egoism, which claims that people can only act in their self-interest. Ethical egoism also differs from rational egoism, which holds that it is rational to act in one's self-interest. Ethical egoism holds, therefore, that actions whose consequences will benefit the doer can be considered ethical in this sense. Ethical egoism contrasts with ethical altruism, which holds that moral agents have an obligation to help others. Egoism and altruism both contrast with ethical utilitarianism, which holds that a moral agent should treat oneself, also known as the subject, with no higher regard than one has for others, as egoism does, by elevating self-interests and the self to a status not granted to others. But it also holds that one should not, as altruism does sacrifice one's own interests to help others' interests, so long as one's own interests, i.e. one's own desires or well-being, are substantially equivalent to the other's interests and well-being. Egoism, utilitarianism, and altruism are all forms of consequentialism, but egoism and altruism contrast with utilitarianism, in that egoism and altruism are both agent-focused forms of consequentialism, i.e. subject-focused or subjective. However, Utilitarianism is held to be agent-neutral, i.e. objective and impartial, it does not treat the subjects, i.e. the selves, i.e. the moral agents, own interests as being more or less important than the interests, desires, or well-being of others. Ethical egoism does not, however, require moral agents to harm the interests and well-being of others when making moral deliberation, for example what is in an agent's self-interest may be incidentally detrimental, beneficial or neutral in its effect on others. Individualism allows for others' interest and well-being to be disregarded or not, as long as what is chosen is efficacious in satisfying the self-interest of the agent. Nor does ethical egoism necessarily entail that, in pursuing self-interest, one ought always to do what one wants to do. For example in the long term, the fulfillment of short-term desires may prove detrimental to the self. Fleeting pleasure, then, takes a backseat to protracted eudaimonia. In the words of James Rachel's, ethical egoism, endorses selfishness, but it doesn't endorse foolishness. Ethical egoism is often used as the philosophical basis for support of right libertarianism and individualist anarchism. These are political positions based partly on a belief that individuals should not coercively prevent others from exercising freedom of action. Ethical egoism can be broadly divided into three categories, individual, personal, and universal. An individual ethical egoist would hold that all people should do whatever benefits my, the individual, self-interest. A personal ethical egoist would hold that he or she should act in his or her self-interest, but would make no claims about what anyone else ought to do. A universal ethical egoist would argue that everyone should act in ways that are in their self-interest. Ethical egoism was introduced by the philosopher Henry Sidgwick in his book The Methods of Ethics, written in 1874. Sidgwick compared egoism to the philosophy of utilitarianism, writing that whereas utilitarianism sought to maximize overall pleasure, egoism focused only on maximizing individual pleasure. Philosophers before Sidgwick have also retroactively been identified as ethical egoists. One ancient example is the philosophy of Yang Zhu, 4th century BC. Yangism, who views Weiwo, or everything for myself, as the only virtue necessary for self-cultivation. Ancient Greek philosophers like Plato, Aristotle and the Stoics were exponents of virtue ethics, and did not accept the formal principle that whatever the good is, we should seek only our own good, or prefer it to the good of others. However, the beliefs of the Cyrenaics have been referred to as a form of egoistic hedonism, and while some refer to Epicurus hedonism as a form of virtue ethics, Others argue as ethics are more properly described as ethical egoism. Philosopher James Rachels, in an essay that takes as its title the theory's name, outlines the three arguments most commonly touted in its favor. It has been argued that extreme ethical egoism is self-defeating. Faced with a situation of limited resources, egoists would consume as much of the resource as they could, making the overall situation worse for everybody. Egoists may respond that if the situation becomes worse for everybody, that would include the egoist, so it is not, in fact, in his or her rational self-interest to take things to such extremes. However, the, unregulated, tragedy off commons and the, one-off, prisoner's dilemma are cases in which, on the one hand, it is rational for an individual to seek to take as much as possible even though that makes things worse for everybody, 
and on the other hand, those cases are not self-refuting since that behavior remains rational even though it is ultimately self-defeating, i.e. self-defeating does not imply self-refuting. A tragedy of the commons, however, assumes some degree of public land. That is, a commons forbidding homesteading requires regulation. Thus, an argument against the tragedy of the commons is fundamentally an argument for private property rights and the system that recognizes both property rights and rational self-interest, capitalism. More generally, an increasing respect for individual rights uniquely allows for increasing wealth creation and increasing usable resources despite a fixed amount of raw materials, for example the West pre-1776 versus post-1776, East versus West Germany. Hong Kong versus mainland China, North versus South Korea, etc. It is not clear how to apply a private ownership model to many examples of commons, however. Examples include large fisheries, the atmosphere and the ASEAN. The term ethical egoism has been applied retroactively to philosophers such as Bernard de Mandeville and to many other materialists of his generation, although none of them declared themselves to be egoists. Note that materialism does not necessarily imply egoism as indicated by Karl Marx, and the many other materialists who espoused forms of collectivism. It has been argued that ethical egoism can lend itself to individualist anarchism such as that of Benjamin Tucker, or the combined anarcho-communism and egoism of Emma Goldman, both of whom were proponents of many egoist ideas put forward by Max Turner. In this context, egoism is another way of describing the sense that the common good should be enjoyed by all. However, most notable anarchists in history have been less radical, retaining altruism and a sense of the importance of the individual that is appreciable but does not go as far as egoism. Recent trends to greater appreciation of egoism within anarchism tend to come from less classical directions such as post-left anarchy or situationism, for example Raoul Weinigam. Egoism has also been referenced by anarcho-capitalists, such as Murray Rothbard. Philosopher Max Stirner, in his book The Ego in Its Own, was the first philosopher to call himself an egoist, though his writing makes clear that he desired not a new idea of morality, ethical egoism, but rather a rejection of morality, amoralism, as a non-existent and limiting spook, for this, Stirner has been described as the first individualist anarchist. Other philosophers, such as Thomas Hobbes and David Gautier, have argued that the conflicts which arise when people each pursue their own ends can be resolved for the best of each individual only if they all voluntarily forego some of their aims, that is, one's self-interest is often best pursued by allowing others to pursue their self-interest as well so that liberty is equal among individuals. Sacrificing one's short-term self-interest to maximize one's long-term self-interest is one form of rational self-interest which is the idea behind most philosophers' advocacy of ethical egoism. Egoists have also argued that one's actual interests are not immediately obvious, and that the pursuit of self-interest involves more than merely the acquisition of some good, but the maximizing of one's chances of survival and or happiness. Philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche suggested that egoistic or life-affirming behavior stimulates jealousy or resentment in others, and that this is the psychological motive for the altruism in Christianity. Sociologist Helmut Schuch similarly considered envy the motive of collective efforts by society to reduce the disproportionate egans of successful individuals through moral or legal constraints, with altruism being primary among these. In addition, Nietzsche, in Beyond Good and Evil and Alistair MacIntyre, in After Virtue, have pointed out that the ancient Greeks did not associate morality with altruism in the way that post-Christian Western civilization has done. Aristotle's view is that we have duties to ourselves as well as to other people, for example friends, and to the polis as a whole. The same is true for Thomas Aquinas, Christian Wolff, and Immanuel Kant, who claim that there are duties to ourselves as Aristotle did, although it has been argued that, for Aristotle, the duty to oneself is primary. Ayn Rand argued that there is a positive harmony of interests among free, rational humans, such that no moral agent can rationally coerce another person consistently with his own long-term self-interest. Rand argued that other people are an enormous value to an individual's well-being, through education, trade and affection, but also that this value could be fully realized only under conditions of political and economic freedom. According to Rand, voluntary trade alone can assure that human interaction is mutually beneficial. Rand's student, Leonard Peikoff has argued that the identification of one's interests itself is impossible absent the use of principles, and that self-interest cannot be consistently pursued absent a consistent adherence to certain ethical principles. Recently, 
Rand's position has also been defended by such writers as Tara Smith, Tibor Mackin, Alan Gotthalf, David Kelly, Douglas Rasmussen, Nathaniel Brandon, Harry Binswanger, Andrew Bernstein, and Craig Biddle. Philosopher David L. Norton identified himself an ethical individualist, and, like Rand, saw harmony between an individual's fidelity to his own self-actualization, or personal destiny, and the achievement of society's well-being. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.